of this. So that protection extends to the kids, but obviously it extends, a lot of my clients want to protect their surviving spouse. Some of the guys will say, you know, Patrick, you know, my goal, my goal, my dream snapshot is something happens to me. I work real hard for what I have. I have two houses, I have my retirement. I want to make sure that my wife is well taken care of, that she's taken care of, that nothing happens. And so we'll make sure that we put that protective language in that client's trust. He goes first. And statistically, sorry guys, they say that men usually go first, and us guys do what we're told. So, <laughs> if we go first, or we do what we're told, and we go first, either or, then you want to make sure what you leave behind for the missus is going to be protected. So the missus now is coming back from the cemetery, and she's down there, you know, saying prayers, and putting the holy water on your grave, and prayers and putting all kinds of birthday cards out. And she's driving home from the cemetery and she gets into an automobile accident. What's going to happen? She gets into an automobile accident with a school bus with a bunch of little kids on it. They're okay, but their lawyers aren't okay. They've got personal injury lawyers. They're a bunch of sharks. And they want to say, well, we're going to sue the automobile insurance policy and we're going to sue whatever Mrs. So-and-so inherited from her late great husband. And he gave her an outright distribution in the power of her hands. How much of that now is exposed to those creditors? 100%. Because if she can control the pen, and all the assets are in her name individually, she can write the checks so any judge or jury is going to order her to pay those creditors with their 